And right now it's time for that time when we have our special guest. Tonight our special guest is Jerry Marsden. Jerry is the Jerry in Jerry and the Pacemakers, one of the biggest groups from the music explosion of the 1960s. We welcome Jerry Marsden as our special guest on The Beat Goes On. Jerry Marsden here in New Zealand on The Beat Goes On. <laughs> Great to be here, thank you, Jared. Uh, Jared, yes. Is that your name? That's my name. Proper G E R A R D. Because that's my name. Yes, it is. And my mother, God bless her, till the day she died, always called me Jared. Never called me Jerry. She said, I christened you Jared, and that's what your name is. God yeah. bless her. And uh, so I'm, to my mum, I'm always Jared. To the rest of the gang, Jerry. <laughs> Two Jareds together, Jared. Yeah. Well, I get a lot of Jerry's, and I get a lot of Gerald's, and I get oh. Gerard, and Ooh. I get, uh, oh, it's just all, No, 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 all Jared. All but you're wonderful, because it's just Jerry, and everybody knows Jerry. That's correct. They, they, <laughs> it's nice to be here with you, Jared. We're both in music. We've both grown up with music. And, yes. um, but we never thought, did we, back then, that, uh, well, you had a wonderful group called Jerry and the Pacemakers, and you'd be on a show one day where it'd be, we'd be talking about a different type of pacemaker. Sure. <laughs> in those days, we didn't have them. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't thought of then. No, but the, as you say, the great days, early days of music. Yeah. Early days of, not the full rock and roll, which for me was Fats Domino, Jerry Lewis and these people. The bit that we tried to go along with, which was our experience of playing all that music. In Hamburg, 1959, wow. we started playing rock and roll to the Germans, with the Beatles and ourselves. And that was a great apprenticeship in music. We loved it. But I first started in Skiffle, with Lonnie Donegan, great Lonnie Donegan learnt us or taught us how to play guitars with a T-chess bass and a washboard. That was my first sort of rock and, not rock and skiff and thing. Then I found Fats Domino, all the great rockers, turned to rock and roll and rhythm and blues, went to Hamburg and progressed into the proper rock and roll music. Great apprenticeship. But we used, sorry Jared, yeah, but we used sure. to play from seven in the evening till two in the morning with a 15 minute break every hour. But we were kids, we were 18 and didn't matter. All the energy in the world. Everything, mm. plus a few pints now and again. <laughs> it, it saw us through the night. Now, now, of course, you'd go home to uh, Liverpool and your mum and dad would say, what are you doing? There's no money in music. Uh, there's not even a proper job. What did they want you to be? My, my mum and dad, God bless them. My dad played ukulele, George Formby style. And every weekend, the friends would come back with them from the pub into our house and they'd sing and play, me and mum would sing, and I'd sing and I thought, that's what I wanna do. So when I told my mum, I was working on the railway, because I worked on the railway, I worked in the car door, my tea factory making tea chests, I worked in Woolworths pushing at the store, just to get money to buy a better guitar. And I said to my mum, mum listen, I've had an offer to go to Germany with the band, I'll have to pack in my job. She said, well, what would you do? I said, well, I'll go to Hamburg and I'll try my best come back here as a pro. I said, but if it doesn't work, I can always go back to the railway because in 10 years time, I could be a train washer, <laughs> which was a wonderful job. She said, well, go on my son. And my dad said, go on and do it. So God bless them. They never once complained. I went to Hamburg, came back and my mother said, be careful because we've just won the war. <laughs> so we went, loved it. And yeah. I decided this is my career. This is yeah. what I want to do. I mean, mum and dad were great. She just wanted me to do what I wanted to do. Did you ever think that it would become the industry that it is today? No, not at all. When we were playing, I thought if I can just earn enough money to keep my life and maybe a family and kids in music, that will do for me. I never thought about making records or anything. I just thought we could play. And then we met a great guy called Brian Epstein, who we used to get records off. He worked in his father's furniture shop, selling records in a little counter. And Paul McCartney and myself would go in and ask him for these strange records from America. So Same you show. and Paul McCartney would walk into uh, the shop where yeah, Brian Epstein and ask Brian for records from the States. Oh. And he said, why did you get these strange records? You know, why don't you play the music in England like Cliff Richard and mm. Faith? Although I liked them. Mm. I didn't like the music, so I couldn't play it. And then Brian one day went down to the cavern, saw the boys playing, and we were in Hamburg at the time, and said to them, look, I think... I can do something. Brian had found his forte. He thought, right, I can do this music. So they signed with Brian. I came back from Hamburg and he said, Jerry, I've just signed the Beatles. Would you like to join me? Because I think I can get the boys a record deal and get you one. So I said, what? Yes, please. Because we never thought about records or nothing. We were just trying to make a few quid. Brian got us the record deal uh, with AMI. The Beatles got this. 
and the rest is basically history mm. on that side of it. Then we were into the recording business. I thought, maybe I can make a few quid in this and maybe I can keep my family through music. And thank God, it worked. But that was my idea. But originally, I just thought, if I just make you more money to, to, to keep a family. And it worked. Now, I, I wonder if you can remember that day that somebody mentioned, how do you do yeah. what you do? Yeah, and, and Mitch Murray, the writer. Yes, that's How true. did that all come about? Well, Because that was a lucky break, wasn't Mitch it? Mitch wrote it <clears throat> for a guy called Adam Faith. That's right. Who sadly is now dead, of course. And Adam didn't like it. There was offered to the Beatles. And they, and they didn't like it. They recorded it, don't yes. they? Yes. They even recorded but, it. But John didn't like it. Hmm. John Lennon was my best pal. And he said, no, Brian, we don't like that as a single. You know, they, they tried it. And he said, uh, Jerry Mars, don't do it. Give it to Jerry. Because you know, I'd do anything to get a record. <laughs> so we did it. And uh, when I got to number one, I rung John. I said, hey, John, you know that, that song you didn't like? He said, oh, yeah. I said, it's going to be number one on Friday. He said, oh, he said strange words, which I can't mention on television, but like, oh, dear. <laughs> and uh, I thank him every day. Thank you, John. God bless you. <laughs> but uh, we got it and made a, a hit record out of it. Now, when you first heard How Do You Do What, did it sound anything like uh, you originally ended up? With, with, did you make many changes to it? I mean, was it just well, a basic Well, it slightly idea? changed, yeah, yeah. because when Mitch had written it for Adam Faith, yeah. and it was like, you know, he was sort of, um, he had a strange voice all Adam. Yeah. So, yeah, we changed. We changed it more to our style of music, because yeah. we had the piano going in it, and, you know, it was the, yeah, we changed it from the original idea. Not a great deal. We started how do you do what do you do? We kept that in and just changed the beats and just moved it around slightly. Yeah. The Beatles wanted to do as a harmony and that didn't work. Yeah. So we just took it as a single voice and did it. Now, it, uh, when you left the studio that day, did you say, we've got a hit? Did you feel that? No. We'd heard it. George Martin, you know, we went back to listen to it. And we'd never heard ourselves properly recorded. Mm. We taped it, but we didn't know what anything was like. Went into the into the studio. He said, "Okay, now yeah, listen to it. this." I went, oh, "Is that his sound?" He said, "Yeah." We said, "God, oh, that's good." He said, "You might have a hit here." We said, "Oh, don't be silly, George." <laughs> so he gave us a tape for it to take home. He said, "You'll go back and I'll ring you in a week, I'll tell you what we think about it." Anyway, they loved it, and he rung me. and said, "Then he said, Jerry, I think we got a hit on our hands." Oh. So I thought, "God, if we get into the top 20, brilliant." Then three weeks later, Brian and me said, guess what? I said, what? He said, how do you do it's going to be number one? Oh, wow, wow. Ma'am, how do you do it's going to be number one? Oh, great, come and have your fish and chips. Shut up, eat your dinner. <laughs> great fun. They had no concept of what it meant, did No, they? not at all. <laughs> no, did we? Because we'd looked at people like Elvis, mm. Cliff Richard, people like that. And you thought, God, they must be fantastic to get to number one. Then it's you, and you think, well, hang on. Well, yeah. We're not fantastic. Yeah. We're just kids from Toxteth. Yeah. And we're number one. Yeah. That's weird. And you suddenly think, well, hang on. Maybe you don't have to be a super, super duper yeah. to get to number one. Yeah, yeah. And it was a very weird feeling. You know, yeah. We didn't know what to think. And to go on with that story slightly, we, we, we played in Chicago to a massive audience. And we come out and the police were taking us out to the car. And a kid came up and said, Jerry, thank you. I said, oh, it's a pleasure. He said, no, thank you for what you've done for kids. So I said, what have I done? He said, you've made us realise that four ugly guys can make it in the charts. <laughs> and he meant it. And I said, you know what? That's the best thing I've ever heard. Because before then, everybody <laughs> yeah, was cool and star type people and the you know, television, all the gear. He said, you made us realise we can do it. Yeah. And I said, thank you. I said, I'll never forget that. I said, and if that's what we've done, I'm proud. And that was wonderful yeah. that the, the kid said that and he meant it. He wasn't taking the piss. He actually meant it. He made us realise that four ugly guys. Yes! I'm famous! <laughs>